Thank you very much, Mr. Michael, for your time. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure. I have a few questions for you. Sure. Uh, first one would be, how do economic consideration intersect with the principles of federalism? And what role does economic decentralization play in promoting regional development and inclusivity? Yeah, okay, that's a very interesting question. Um, the, the devolution of power and um, decentralization um, obviously needs to be accompanied by the devolution and decentralization of economic resources and the ability to raise revenue and to both expend that revenue as well. So Nepal's constitution is actually really quite unique across the world in the amount of power that it has devolved to the local level. Um, but it has not yet been able to match that with adequate revenue raising powers right across the local level. And so this inhibits uh, the exercise of autonomy by the local governments and also limits their ability to be responsive to uh, local demands. And so I think that there needs to be more emphasis on the, the, um, the empowerment of local governments to raise their own revenue resources and to have greater say in how they actually spend. Um, so at the moment I understand there's a lot of um, conditional grants and tied grants provided to subnational units um, which then also takes their human resources into certain directions and means that they also takes away from their ability to then respond to the, to the local demands of people. Um, so it's absolutely essential um, in a federal system to also decentralise revenue raising capacities um, and also to have impartial and non-partisan mechanisms for allocating resources from the central region, um, so to remove political interference um, from those sorts of decisions. Thank you very much. Uh, my second question would be, what is the major key takeaway from this conference that a world or Nepal federal system can learn? Okay, um, another difficult question. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's, there's one theme that, that I'm actually going to talk about this afternoon and that has come up repeatedly and it comes up in the media, it comes up in conversation and it comes up in questions and comments by presenters but is not very much addressed in a formal sense by academic studies um, or by clear advocacy and that is the reform of the political parties to match the federal system. And so the political parties in uh, Nepal are very, very centralised, very, very controlled by a small number of leaders. And so they are determining leaders at provincial and local levels. They are determining candidates at the local level elections. I did interviews with um, political parties a couple of years ago. Uh, and top leaders were deciding who would be candidates in local government elections. And this is almost unheard of around the world and, and so this is clearly a huge impediment to the proper implementation of federalism. Um, one of the first um, political scientists to do a comparative study of federalism way back in 1964, he said political parties are the key variable determining how a federal system operates. And so if your political party system is centralised, then your federal system would be centralised. And so this is what we see here in Nepal. And so I think the urgent need um, for the implementation, the proper implementation of federalism here, that has come out indirectly through almost every conversation at this conference, is the reform of the major political parties. Thank you. That's a great message for Nepalese leaders and leaders around the world for sure. Um, my last question would be, what message do you have for young lawyers like us? Um, I guess uh, it would be to pay attention to the politics of it all. So um, I'm a political scientist and I think I am a minority here. Um, but yeah, you can read the constitution and you can read all the laws and you can look at case laws, but unless you can understand how things are operating, um, what sort of the discussions are being had, um, how power and inequality plays out within the different institutions, within the political parties, um, then you don't necessarily get an understanding of how that legal system actually works. So in 
politics, we distinguish between, we like to call them formal and informal institutions. So the formal institutions are the organisations, the laws, those um, codified processes, and this is what legal students will tend to study. And then the informal institutions are those practices that happen on the side, um, the deal making, the bargaining that goes on. Um, the negotiations between different groups and these have a huge impact on how all those laws are actually interpreted and implemented and so I would um, suggest to law students to remember to look at the politics and to consider the informal institutions and how they affect the operation of formal institutions. Thank you very much Mr. Brin. Uh, on behalf of Kathmandu University School of Law and the organising team, uh, we have this token of love uh, for you. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. It's been um, a great conference and I've been very happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank See you. you. See you.